Hi, right, so I just thought I'd uh, throw this on videotape because as I'm taking a look and uh, doing some tests on these two new power supplies that I uh, acquired recently. And uh, channel one on the bottom supply is doing something, or this supply I should say, is doing something a little weird. Um, it's set for 8 volts at maximum current output of 5 amps. It's holding the current. And you can see I've got a little electronic load going there. Uh, and you can see on the actual electronic load, the voltage is also varying rather oddly. Um, when we come back here, yeah, there's something going screwy with the voltage. It's sort of regulating, not really regulating properly. It's supposed to be 8 volts. It'll sort of droop down and then come back up and droop down. Really weird. And if we shut the outputs off and turn them back on, that's sort of the same thing. What we're going to do is we're going to shut the load off, I think, for a while. And we'll come back and see if that changes anything. You'll have to pardon the shaky cam because I'm just, uh, as I said, I just grabbed the video camera and started recording. This is channel 2 of the same power supply. Uh, and again, same test. Uh, maximum voltage, maximum current. Uh, and again, you can see it's holding constant of approximately 5 amps. So life is grand. Um, I'm not sure what's going on. If you flip back to channel 1, it's sort of recovered, and you can see it's going to go down a bit, and then boom, it's going to re-regular. Regula it looks like the regulation kicks back in. It's really weird. I've never seen anything like that. No, there's no load on this channel. It's just uh, it's just uh, sitting there and doing not much. Um, I don't wonder though whether or not there's something, some sort of heat uh, problem involved, considering as that channel was loaded for a little bit longer, it started to droop. So I don't know. We'll have to check that. Um, and of course, you can switch this to high voltage, and we'll go turn this all the way up to. 20 volts. Uh, set the limit here. 20 volts. That's fine. Maximum current. That's also fine. So yeah, I mean, you know, seems to be holding that. That seems to be okay. If we flip back to here. Everything looks fine too. Uh, and if we switch this to high voltage as well, uh, we'll go and set the current there. Bring that up. Go. Um, it's maxed out there. So flip that back. There we go. Uh, let's bring it down. Nope. Uh, oh, oh, being an idiot. My load is set for five amps. So of course, it's not going to work. All right, there we go. Bring that down just to the point, should be 2.5 amps. Yeah, that's good enough. Yeah, sorry, my, my load was already set for 5 amps. So of course, when I switch to the higher range, it only goes to 2.5 amps. Uh, and of course, the, <laughs> it switches immediately to constant current. Um, yeah, so that looks, uh, that looks fine. Nothing seems to be wrong there. Uh, and this channel seems to be okay. And again, if we flip back to the other one, um, yeah, so here I'm going to go and switch, I'm going to go ahead and unplug the load and put it back on channel 1. We'll load down channel 1 and see what happens. Uh, and again, switch that on and everything looks reasonably okay. I will let it sit here and see if uh, it, I get some more problems with channel 1. But channel 2 on the supply looks fantastic, so I don't know, don't know what's going on. So after thinking about the, you know, thinking about this problem for a few minutes, I kind of realized, well, wait a second, the high voltage range, so that's the 20 volt range, so if we're channel one for the high voltage range, and uh, of course, <laughs> doesn't adjust the voltage, so let's go do that. We'll bring that all the way up to 20 volts, 20.2 volts. All right, there you go. Now, I left it on this, in this state, uh, and, don't, and let's not forget channel one again is the, the channel with the problem on the low voltage range, right? And that's when we set the low voltage, eight volts, five amps. But on the high voltage range, this one has been running for close to 30 or 40 minutes, rock solid. So I said, well, well, why would that be the case? And the obvious thing is, well, wait a second, in the higher voltage range, it's passing, the, the main pass transistor 
is passing a lower current. Um, as silly as that sounds, you know, it's more it's more power still, right? Then um, this is uh, this is 50 volts, uh, 50 50 watts, pardon me, versus 8 volts at 5 amps, which is only 40 watts. But nevertheless, um, this one is passing a little bit more power but it's got less current. So what I'm thinking is perhaps the main pass transistor has been damaged in some way such that it can't fully, um, it can't fully uh, get up to the full five amps. Um, and so that's why I said, well, why don't I try and switch this to the low range, the range of the problem, and run it at 2.5 amps. And that would seem to indicate that if there's if there's still a problem and it's not the main pass transistor, we'll still have we'll have this value start going on uh, into a non -re non-regulated state. So let's uh, I'll leave that going and we'll uh, come back in a bit. So I just wanted to uh, say that we did I did a quick check and it stayed in a fully uh, solid eight volts, no problem. Uh, didn't seem to go under out of regulation. So clearly um, the problem is only at a higher current so I suspect I'm correct with the MOSFET not being able to reach or f for whatever reason reach um, the higher current and maintain re voltage regulation at the same time so we're gonna go ahead and uh, open up and um, see what's inside and see if we can try and measure a few voltages as per normal and uh, see if we can troubleshoot a little further alright so we're gonna go in and start taking a look at this thing um, oops wrong way there we go I'm going to uh, go ahead and pull this apart, um, at least pop the back off, pop the top off, and we'll take a couple of measurements inside. Uh, essentially I want to take a look at the two pass transistors first of all, and I want to uh, also measure a couple of points just around them. Uh, there's a couple of op amps uh, that are controlling the pass transistors for each channel. So we're going to only work with, uh, or look at channel one, because that's the only one that we have a problem with. So to get into these guys, it's fairly straightforward. You take the uh, rubber boot off the back. And there is a Torx, not Torx, pardon me, a Hex, uh, not Torx. Uh, I'll just go try and find the right size. Uh, my ball is that guy. A little smaller. That was Torx, huh? Not as crazy as I thought it was. It's small. This is probably making for a really boring video. Ah, there we go. Okay, let's go get this back off. I actually fixed one of these, uh, our similar su supply we had at work. Um, they're not. Uh, Terribly complex beasts. Uh, if I remember correctly, these are capital screws. Makes our lives a bit easier. So now I'm fearing. Just comes right off. That's right, those are capital screws. Good work. I approve. And now, that should be just a matter of pulling this thing. Oh, yeah, no, that's right. Sorry. There's, yeah, so there's, there's four screws on each, uh, two on each side. So we'll just go ahead and pull those off really quickly. Sort of hoping when I open this up, I'm not going to find. Uh, oh, well, actually, so you can see that's interesting. So that that tells me. And also, this oh, tough was to get that guy off too. Yeah, it 
tells me that probably these have not been opened since that lock type was put on the screws, which is actually a really good sign. I mean, it's probably nobody's been inside this unit. So if we've got a problem, nobody's actually tried to fix it. Well, that's it. I know we have a problem, but it doesn't look like anybody's been inside this unit to fix it, which is good. That means we're seeing the problem firsthand. And we can diagnose it like we're trying to. And if we're really lucky, we'll fix it. And it comes off. And now, you gotta be careful not to tilt this on the front because there, there are parts in the front panel we do not want squished. Ooh, hello. That's a fair amount of this. Well, I guess it's definitely not been opened up to be clean. All right, what do we have here? No, so right away, uh -huh, yes, okay, so. <laughs> uh, so we've got um, the GPID board here. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take that off right away, because that's a pain. I have to get the two the board that it wants, actually, actually, the board that it wants on the bottom now that I think about it. Let's see. Oof. Uh, Alright, I'll do these guys here. Um, so, the two transistors we're interested in are these guys right here. I'll get my, my fat finger out of the way. Zoom in. So, um, we've got the two channels here, right? And the two, the main two pass transistors, this is exactly as I remembered on the other power supply, are here and here, and here and here, um, two per channel. So, the interesting thing is that the base, or the gate, I should say, for this, for these guys here, so this is the, uh, this is channel one, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it would have been nice if they marked it, but I think so. Yeah, that's this is channel one right here. So these are the two transistors, so Q503 and Q109. Q503 is the um, is the one above ground, this one's below ground. And both of these have their gate controlled by a couple of uh, op amps, which I think are on the other side, I believe they're surface mounted, but I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but they're definitely not on this side. And the interesting thing is to measure, we need to, we should try and measure this guy, uh, both the gate here and the gate on this one. We'll measure the gate actually in Q503, because it's probably the main, not probably, it is the main pass transistor. So what I'm expecting to see is that when we, uh, so if you remember quickly, the problem was that when we have um, channel one set for greater than, Eight volts, uh, two two point five amps. It starts to oscillate. It starts to you know drift up and down uh, in sort of an unregu unregulated manner. So the idea would be to set to eight volts, two point five amps. Measure what's going on here on the gate of this pass transistor in a quote unquote normal working mode. And we can also do it in twenty volts, two point five amps. I don't think it makes a difference. I think it's really the current that's causing the grief here somewhere. Uh, the circuit is now able to generate uh, the full five amps that this, case, this unit, this uh, channel, is capable of. So the next step, once we see it sort of in a mode where it's working, is to actually redo, re, you know, make the problem occur again, and then measure what's going on here, and see again: is there, you know, is there an oscillation happening? Because of course that's going to, it's going to be translated directly through to the output. Um, and, or maybe something else is going on here. Maybe this is rock solid and it's still oscillating, in which case, or, or drifting, in which case, it's definitely the transistor that's screwed. If the signal here is is shifting and moving around, then well, you know, it might actually be the op amp or something else that's blown here. But typically, it's the pass transistor. This is what was blown in the other unit that I fixed, uh, and actually, this one was just completely blown. It was just gone. There's a blowhole through it and everything. So that one was really easy. Once I saw it, it was just replaced and we're done. Uh, this one may be a little bit trickier, but I think it's still the same problem. So, 
That being said, I don't have a uh, IRF 540, which is what this, these two guys are. I just want to do a quick uh, look-see at the schematic uh, to show you what I'll be replacing and uh, to just give you an idea why I think it's the, the cause of the problem. So um, this, this whole thing, in fact, it's much bigger than that. If we zoom out, there's this whole thing here. This is the schematic for uh, one of the two channels, the output channels, um, and this is the analog control, the analog part, not the digital control board. That's on a different schematic. Um, and we've got a connector right here that's coming from our digital control board and a couple op amps. Uh, and the interesting thing, so this is, uh, it's difficult to see, so I'm gonna zoom back out. Just kind of zoom, zoom, scooch down here. So here's our uh, transformer here <clears throat> with the various taps. We have um, the main power, the main output rail is provided by this, uh, this, these taps here, which I can't even read that, but that is, I have no idea. This is a hundred volt cap here, so. Uh, probably would have been a good idea to try and look this up. I don't know exactly what, this, what the voltage coming out of here is. It's because it's not obvious and there's these completely useless numbers on the side here unless, you know, irrelevant. Anyway, we've got our <clears throat> full bridge rectifier here. Uh, full wave rectifier, I should say. And um, what we're going to, and, and this is the actual output pathway right out through to the front. So this is clearly where we're getting uh, our uh, voltage and current control. Um, we've got our two, we've got two transistors here, our two main pass transistors, and there's a current shunt further on down here. Um, current sense, I should say, not shunt, obviously. The to, there's so this, this, it's an interesting design. So I'm not entirely sure why they they've designed it like this. So I'm going to just come in a little bit closer and reframe real quickly. <clears throat> so you can see we have a transistor here and here. They're both NPN MOSFETs. Uh, NPN, the N channel MOSFETs, pardon me. And uh, this one is controlled via this op amp here, so you can see there. And then this guy is controlled by another op amp just down below. Um, <clears throat> now, neither of these look obviously blown. I did check the voltage coming out of uh, the, the, both the control loop here from, from this op amp and the other one, and they didn't look obviously dead either so I'm not entirely sure I'm not, I'm not entirely sure what's broken here but clearly when I'm looking at uh, the voltages here and uh, the quick uh, color code here the brown uh, the black ones are from the channel, ch channel 2 on the same uh, unit uh, set at the same values and whatnot uh, so either loaded out at 5 amps or no load or whatnot and the red values here are the same measured values uh, on on the channel one here that's having that trouble uh, and sorry pardon me the uh, one in brackets of the load loaded uh, value and the non-loaded value so so max voltage and max load of uh, five amps so the the interesting thing here was uh, it looked like uh, that when this channel is having the problem that that we were, we've been seeing where it, it can't it can't hold the, the the voltage in a regulated fashion. It keeps you know drifting up and down and back and forth, uh, you know, around eight volts. But it can dip as low as 7.5, 7.2, and then up, you know, to 8.1 or whatnot. Uh, it looks like there was the, the 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 voltage here on one of these one of these points. I think it was it might have been the gate here was just pegged. It was max, so uh, or or was close to zero in some cases. So it it, it looked really weird, and it makes me think that. Either the tra either the op amps can't drive these transistors properly, or they're driving them as hard as they can. Yet the transistor cannot either amplify or, or pass the current that's required, or whatever. Um, and maybe there's something you know indeed wrong with these two. So what we're going to do, or I'm going to do, is I'm gonna just going to say screw it. These were a couple bucks each. They're they're IRF P510, I think, 540. Sorry. IRF P540, so IRF uh, 540s. Uh, they're two bucks a pop, so I just said screw it, I'll buy a bunch of them and I'll replace both of these. So that's what we're gonna do now. So we'll go ahead and pull the board out and I'm gonna reframe and set up and I'll show you that.